Hi, I'm Dr. Marcellino D'Ambrosio. Welcome to this episode of Early Church Fathers. I didn't know who the fathers of the church were when I first heard people use that term. And what I found out is the fathers of the church is not an official title bestowed on someone by the Pope or something like that. There's not an official list, exhaustive, all-inclusive list of who is an early church father. We do have an exhaustive list of people who are doctors of the church, extraordinary teachers recognized by the Pope that come from every generation of the church's life. But the fathers of the church are different. First of all, they're called fathers because they helped bring Christianity out of its diapers into adulthood. And therefore, they come from a very particular era, the early time, the early centuries of the church, and no one can ever play the role that they played once again. They were the teachers and the teachers who wrote down their teaching so that they could give, them, give this teaching to subsequent generations. Early teachers from about the year 100 to about the year 800. And they left their writings for us, and in their writings we find that they passed on the early Christian tradition of doctrine, and they helped to clarify that tradition, that tradition going back to the apostles. Now that's a long period of time, from 100 to 800. A lot of things changed during that period. So let's break it down into a few different periods. First of all, we have the period when Christianity was illegal. It became legal, and right afterwards there was a groundbreaking event the first great council of the church, the Council of Nicaea. Before that council, we refer to the fathers during the age of persecution as the anti-Nicene fathers. And there are two groups that we can distinguish out of the anti-Nicene fathers. Anti means before in this context. First of all, there are a group of people who were alive when the apostles were alive. They were either immediate disciples of the apostles or had some contact with them and learned from them. They're called the apostolic fathers. They lived from about the year, gosh, late 60s through about 150, and their writings come to us beginning in the year 95 AD. Think about the importance of these people in being able to clarify what the apostles actually meant when they wrote the words of Scripture, and what they didn't write in Scripture, the other things that, that they taught but didn't get down in Scripture. Then after them, we have an unusual group of people very bright, very gifted, many times scholars, secular scholars who got converted and then used all their scholarship and learning to advance the cause of the gospel. We call these men apologists and they defended the faith. They were apologists because they defended the faith publicly against the false charges brought by other pagan scholars and priests and politicians. And they lived and wrote from about the year 150 all the way through the Council of Nicaea at 325. At the Council of Nicaea, wonderful things happened around that era. For the next two centuries, the key dogmas of the faith were banged out by four councils. The liturgies that we now know, the Roman liturgy of the West, the Byzantine and Maronite liturgies of the East, they took shape during this time. The canon of Scripture took shape during this time. Incredible time. We call this the Golden Era. And we have great men during this era, like St. Augustine and St. Athanasius, and St. Basil the Great, and St. Ambrose, who represent the, church, the finest of the church's teaching in this time. And then finally we have a period, an afterglow, of fathers who helped make more precise the teaching of earlier fathers. This is a great and diverse group of people, but they give to us something that we need desperately. They give us a witness to what the apostles taught, and they give us key vocabulary, key insights, key clarifications so that we can, in fact, understand more completely with the mind of God what it is that the scriptures really mean. I'm Dr. Marcellino D'Ambrosio. Thanks for joining us for Early Church Fathers.